Today on Resource Review, we venture further afield than the classroom as we explore secondary teaching resources for use outdoors. They are a head-mounted camera, a series of identification charts, and a lightweight shelter. Recommending today's resources, we have John Clark, Deputy Head Teacher at Walsall Academy with responsibility for geography and outdoor education. On the panel today, we have John Reimer. John is Worcestershire Children's Services Advisor for Sustainability and Head of Bishopswood Centre, and Education Consultant Adrienne Jones. And Matthew Tosh, our roving resource investigator, is out and about to see what pupils and teachers make of our resources. Well, John, your first choice of resource for us today is the rather exciting looking black eye head and helmet cam. Tell us about this resource. Right, this is a, a very rugged piece of kit. Built in microphone, waterproof, easy to put onto a student. They don't know they've got it on after five minutes. So right. I'll demonstrate away. Okay. You can wear the helmet cam, look around, it records it onto a device such as a PVR or onto a video camera. So what you've got then is a first person record of what actually happened, brings it much more back to life. When you come back into the classroom, you can play the video back and use it with the students. Right, OK. And what is it about this particular camera that you like? I mean, you said it's, it's robust. Is there anything else that makes it stand out? I think the fact that the microphone is actually built in rather than having something separate that clips on. It's not a very expensive piece of kit, but if you buy it as a whole curriculum, a whole school, then it's really affordable. Fantastic for uh, river studies and geography, uh, San Juan ecosystems, urban areas. OK, well, thank you very much. Now let's go over to Matthew Tosh to see Black Eye's head and helmet camera in action. Do you ever get the feeling you're being watched? Well, you can watch other things with a camera like this one here. This is the Black Eye 2 head and helmet camera. It's got its own built-in microphone, so you can record sound as well as pictures. Now, the pictures can be recorded at 420 lines, which is almost TV resolution. And they're outputted via the battery pack, which takes eight AA-sized batteries. And the connection that you get are fairly standard AV connections. So if you've got a DV camera, you can plug into that and record from it. Or you can use one of these, a PVR, personal video recording device. Well, Simone Byrne has been putting the camera to its use with some of her pupils, so let's see how she gets on. Does it have eight pairs of jointed legs? I think you're for eight yeah. pairs. It looks like it has legs. It's um, got six or eight. How has the Black Eye 2 been used? Um, the students have used it to film the work they've been doing. We had different groups coming out looking at plants and the um, invertebrates that we were identifying. So I put the black eye on one group when they were doing the plants, so we've got footage of the plants, and then one group that was doing the invertebrates, we've got footage of that, both to use in the classroom. Yeah, it is. Look, and the things close. There's definitely the motivation factor. They like being able to see back what they've done. Do you think there are any limitations with the equipment? Um, the only thing we've been noticing is that the, stu the students actually have to properly look down. If they look up to talk to someone, obviously you get a footage of the ceiling. But once they've got used to that, they were very good at keeping it focused on their work. What do you like best about it? I think it's the motivational factor of the students. They're, they're using that sort of technology. They probably worked out how to use it much quicker than I did. It has motivated them. They love it. And so, your overall impressions? I like it. Um, I'm not sure if it, the school budget would stretch to it, but if it did, I think it was something we'd possibly consider purchasing. Thank you very much. Well, that's a teacher's opinion. And now let's find out what our panel thinks. Back to the studio. John, what do you make of this particular head camera? Well, when I first heard about it, I was a bit sceptical about using it for education, particularly on field trips, because I'm a great believer in getting the youngsters out there actually experiencing the environment which they're studying. And anything that's going to get in the way of that, I, I would be uh, reluctant to use. Having actually seen it in use, I can actually see that one of the advantages of it is that the youngsters don't have to be pressing any buttons, no zoom controls. So as long as the excitement and the uh, innovation of it doesn't actually overwhelm the activity they're meant to be doing, then I can see the value of it. I remain to be completely convinced. But this is bringing the environment back into the classroom. It's about the first person real experiences. We know that students forget what they've actually done sometimes, and especially with the impact of coursework both at GCSE, A level, key stage three field trips, it provides equal opportunity to the same experience. 
Adrienne? Um, it's about personalised learning. I think, it's, I think it could be really supportive of uh, an individual student's sense of learning. When you've got a separate microphone, it can often be a worry. And it's having a camera here and a mic there. I think when they forget about it, you'll get talk about what's going on, about, about the thinking that's taking place, which may not happen if, you're, if you've got a handheld camera. Well, thank you. Let's move on to John's second choice of resource. And these are the field identification leaflets from the Field Studies Council. Tell us about this resource, John, and why you like it. Now, the Field Studies Council, which are a leader in providing environmental education, have produced something that's not just easy to use and see, very colourful, it's cheap, it's waterproof. They have a whole range covering all types of fieldwork activities, including the clouds and oh, the cloud brilliant. name trail, which brings in games and something that can be used at all different levels. It goes into problem solving, what it actually means, and quite a lot of resource. So not only do you use it in the field, bring it back, use it in the classroom. OK, well, let's go back to Matthew and Simone to see what she makes of the Field Study Council's identification charts. There's a plethora of flora and fauna to be found on any field trip and even around your own school site. So something like this would come in really handy. This is one of the identification charts from the Field Studies Council. Now they feature all kinds of animal groups and different ecological environments. This one here is one on woodlands. Each one features full colour diagrams and there's even some food chains and things that you might find useful. Well, we're going over now to see Simone Byrne and see if she can identify any pros or cons along with her students whilst using these charts. Simone, can you tell me how you've been using the Field Studies Council's identification charts? They've been really useful for us actually because we're an urban site. With the plants that we have, our head technician then put markers by them with a letter. They had to use the Field Studies charts to try and identify the mystery plants. Look. This, this is this. Yeah. Because of the colour. Yeah. And the style. They collected in the leaf litter and then had to separate the animals out and then use the hand lenses to try and answer the questions that are on the field studies chart. Does that have legs? Nope. I think the students found it quite challenging, but it was quite useful to give the students a hands-on idea of what we mean by classification and identification. Having something like that that you can take out has been really, really helpful. Because of the way they're set out, they're colourful, the students have been able to follow them with ease and they're um, good because classification and being able to use a key is one of the skills that they need for um, their science work. Because they're laminated, you don't have to worry about them getting wet or the kids dropping them and getting dirty. Do you think they could be improved in any way? Maybe looking at some of the species that are more common in some of the more urban areas would be useful. So your overall impression of the resource? They're good. They've been really useful in the classroom and out in the field. The students responded to them and they can get a feel of what they need to do. So yeah, there's something that we um, are going to be using. That's really good to know. And from a very cold bench, let's go to a nice warm studio. Adrienne, what do you make of these identification charts? Well, they're a very versatile resource and they, it's the multiplicity of uses that actually make them what they are. I'm not too keen on the insect one. Something about the colours and the, the way the illustrations are done on that. I think illustratively, the rest of them have got an awful lot off. They're colourful, they're good, the pictures are a good size. One thing I did like, particularly about the um, plants in playing fields, was a request by FSC to get in touch with them if, they, if any, any other plants are discovered. And I think the fact that students are using a resource which can then have an additional extension, you know, get in touch with the people that have produced them, influence it, change it, I think yeah, that's, that's a good thing. John, do you like this type of resource? Yes, I think it's my favourite kind of identification key. One of the good things about it is that youngsters can use it very easily. It gets over that barrier that's so often there in field work of we can't actually work out the ecology of what's happening because we can't work out the names of the plants and animals. And I think that they're a very good introduction to using keys. I particularly like, uh, I like the insect ones actually, because they are name trails. They're taking the youngsters on a, a journey where they have to ask pairs of questions 
and if it's got four legs they go in one direction, if it's got six legs they go in another direction and so on, which prepares them then for using the dichotomous keys that they will find in the back of reference books. I love the playing field one because right, it that's enables the one, you've got here. the one I've got here, pl plants of playing fields, it enables schools to actually do meaningful field studies in their own school grounds, which is tremendous. The one drawback I've found, although John said they're waterproof, they're not entirely waterproof because mm. they actually have trimmed them to the edge. They're laminated on each side. If you leave them out on a table um, when it pours with rain, which we've done, <laughs> uh, it does seep in from the edge. We've relaminated ours right. to actually put a margin on it. Oh, that's quite a good yeah, trick. It's quite a good idea just to relaminate them with some of them because if you're looking at transects and you find mm. different things at different places, chop them up, laminate them, and put them yes. back to back. Mm. Right. Okay. Thank you. Well, time now to move on to John's third choice of resource for us and this is an interesting one John it's this sort of bluey green thing at the front of the table Can you explain it to me I really don't okay. understand it this is a mountain shelter uh, we're all in a, a time now we've got to be conscious of health and safety and how many times have we gone out on a field trip or out and it's pouring down with rain you're trying to keep your students motivated you're trying to keep them dry you need somewhere to eat your lunch, but not only that, you need somewhere to carry on your study. A mountain shelter is basically a great big piece of ripstop nylon. It's got a vent hole in it, it's also got a see-through window, so you can see if it's still raining. There's no poles, it's seconds to put it up. You can take up to 14 students inside of one. You just pull it out of the bag, everybody takes part in it, pulls it underneath the bottom, sits down and you dry. And actually, it's a great feeling community when you're inside this special environment that you've created. It's not very big. You can chuck it into your rucksack to carry it about. This is a small one, is that right? For the two small to three one people. is on the table, which is two to three people. The the other one that you've got in your hand now, that'll fit 14 people inside of well, there. So that's not bad to put in your rucksack, is it? It's, it's very light weight. It's certainly not. And you can yeah. actually, that's a compression sack, so you can pull it tighter and make it smaller. John, are you a fan of these things? I think it's great. As John says, health and safety is very important. I would in the past have always carried a sleeping bag with me if a child gets cold. That's only one child you can warm up. With this you actually can safeguard the whole group. It reassures the teachers as well. I think that's an important thing. A lot of teachers are worried about taking the youngsters outside. If it looks like rain they might abandon their field trip. Yeah. If they've got one of these, they might feel more confident to actually take the youngsters that day. And to have day. all your pupils in one space, yeah. they can't escape. I love the communal <laughs> aspect of it. Adrienne. Um, you don't get in it just through that tube, do you? Certainly <laughs> don't. No, I don't think I'd fit. <laughs> it's the only way to keep it anchored to have a human being inside it. Yes, otherwise it's going to blow away. So you've got to have your group. Yes. But it doesn't matter if you've got six in a 14 person, it still works quite easily. Well, that's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are... The Black Eye 2 Head and Helmet Camera from actioncameras.co.uk Fold out identification charts from the Field Studies Council publications, and the large classic shelter from Outdoor Designs. For more information about all of the resources we've talked about, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or email us, resource review at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to John, to John, and to Adrienne, and to you for joining us. See you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye. <laughs>